unless it is out new code it's not working and we go a bit crazy <laughs> stay tuned as we experience minor difficulties <laughs> Mm. We recently bought a new coffee machine. It's a pretty substantial coffee machine, I have to say. Whew. Mm, I'm telling you guys, oh, ho, ho, ho. that was that was money well spent. Um, right, hi, I'm Christian. This is uh, Laserfs Academy. This is uh, the Advanced Rock Tutorial. We are working on brains. Uh, this is a uh, so that's how we call different player behaviors, uh, different enemy behaviors. Um, we are working on like tool sets to uh, to create different enemy behaviors, and you can see like we have such beautiful things happening already. Oh, 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 oh. it cannot get any better though, right? Right? It can. I'm hoping this today we're gonna finish our up our brain stuff, but there's a lot of stuff we want to do. Um, so we want to create like this bum rush uh, the follow behavior um, uh, for the enemy, so the main enemies can kind of attack the player uh, or, or interact with the player. Uh, we want to maybe have a, a loop command. Uh, still not quite sure how I'm gonna pull off the loop command. I'm gonna think about that. Uh, then we can maybe do the boss. We did the brain clone command. Um, I want to maybe start uh, with something like this. This is this is this trails thing. That let me let me do this first. Um, follow trails. Uh, but before we do trails, I actually want to do something else, and that is gonna be main enemy something like this so um you've seen you've seen the problem that happens when we do the clone command where it's like suddenly each one of the clones has its own overlay i, I, I don't quite like that there's just like a, a lot to parse uh, and to be fair there's just like really one enemy that that we are spawning the other ones are just clones and whenever we have a situation like this it would be nice if we have um if we could uh, save, you know, which is the main enemy. Um, and also, I think it's a good idea, generally, to be like, uh, have a function that resets the enemies. Um, we have a function that spawns the enemies, that's good, but I want to have like a dedicated reset, um, reset function. So let's, let's call it function uh, reset n, because we do it quite a lot. And when I do that, we're gonna go, go enemies equals Burp, burp. Spawn n, and we're gonna look for where we actually calling spawn n. There we go. That's something that we want to do. We're gonna spawn n. Does spawn n actually return the enemy? Is that how it works? No, it does not, I think, right? It doesn't return the enemy. Okay, so we're gonna do, um, let's call it protag, the protagonist. <laughs> protagonist equals enemies one. So we're gonna spawn one enemy and we're gonna immediately save it as our protagonist enemy. And then every, every time we do, do the spawn n, uh, let me see here. So when we do this, we actually, what we want to do is we want to do, do, do the reset n. And so resetting the enemy will automatically also, you know, assign our protagonist. Um, yeah, and then do we do we do, do another spawn n? Yeah, here, so what? Reset n. Where are we doing this here? What is this? What, what function are we in here? Update brain. Re reset n. Where, where else are we doing this? This? Oh, yeah, yeah. So one is an update setup and the other one is, yeah, it's basically the same code. Okay, good. Err, there's too much, too much hap Err, what? Oh, so meta is, so meta. Oh, oh yeah, 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 okay, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, let's create, let's let's grab this here as well. Let's let's get into, yeah, 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 that's good, that's good, fine. Okay, uh, nothing changed, but now we have kind of like this pro tag enemy, and so what I want to do now when we're drawing the overlays, 
I want to only draw it over the protagonist. Um, mm -mm. So like here, if overlay and um, E equals protag, right? So now when we go to this, see now only the first enemy gets the gets the arrow treatment and the other enemies are their clones, so they're kind of like second order citizens. Oh man, this is this is good coffee. Mm. Okay, so trails. Um, let me let me save this. Let me let me uh, let me paint your pictures. Let me paint your picture. Um, show trails equals false. No, so we have gonna have a trails thing, but um, then an update function, an update function. Update brain here when we press, let's say when we press key two, um, we're gonna say like show trails equals not show trails. So trails. With the trails, I want to have kind of like um let's let's say trails equals uh let's let's call it cur trails for reasons I will explain later. Um so I want to just create an array of little two value objects um, and those objects will be just like the position of the uh, enemy at the current time and then I will just draw all those those positions but I want to maybe do this um, I'm going to record the trails and then uh, when the enemy responds then I'm going to show kind of like the, the last movement on the screen right so that's why we have like current trails and just like the trails or like let's call it old trails Let's call it new trails and then um, current trails. Um, because I always want to have one tr set of trails that is visible on the screen and one tr set of trails is being recorded. Because when we do some changes to the code, right, then maybe the, the trails will change. But I, I have to let the simulation run to record the positions of the enemy, which I then can show. Uh, let, let, let's, let's, be, let's be just like, let me step you through this. Okay, so that's why we actually did the reset n because we actually want to reset the trails here in the reset n function, right? And then let's, let's see where we're deleting then. If not on screen, then we're deleting it. And then this is it here, right? Do enemies, yeah. And then again, this is a little code for editor. Uh, if, if e dot uh, if e equals uh, pro tag, then new um, cur trails equals new trails. So there's like two sets of trails. One set of trails, new trails. That's the one that's being recorded right now, and the cur sale uh, cur trails. A set of trails which is the one kind of like from the previous loop the one that we actually want to draw on this to the screen okay now let us actually start adding things to the new trails right we're actually going to do it always no, no matter where we if we want to show them or not we just, it's just something we're always going to do in the background um and we're going to do it after the do enemies right uh, we're going to go uh new uh let's go add new trails uh, pro tag. Oh, we have to also make sure it exists. So if pro, yeah, if pro tag, right? Hmm. Then, yeah, um, we might record enemy that is maybe not on the screen sometimes. Oh, whatever. Um, we're gonna see if this works. So we're gonna just uh, put the position. We're gonna create like a little object that, or like a little table that only has two entries which is the X and the Y position. And we can be a bit wasteful here, that's okay. Uh, this is just like for preview purposes or like for editor purposes. This is not something that will ever make its way to our actual game. This is just like some for us, something for us to see. Okay, so now we're just like dumping the position, every frame we're dumping the position of the enemy, uh, of, the in, of the protagonist enemy, of the one protagonist enemy. We're dumping that into the trails array. We kind of like uh, logging where the position of the enemy was, okay? Um, and then after it's finished, then that will become the current trails array. 
so now all that is left to do is to actually draw this kind of stuff. So, so after we've drawn the enemies, I wonder if we should before or after. Let's, let's, for now, let's put it after. Actually, after the muzzle flash as well. Uh, we're going to go if show trails, then for t in all cur trails. Do. So we're going to go through the cur trails array. And I'm just going to do like a little, little innocent p set. p set. Uh, t1, t2, and it's going to be green, 11. Bam! Let's run this. It's not working. Is this show trails even on? Let's just put it, let's put it always on. Did I make some 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 mistake? It's not working. Why is it not working? God damn it! Ah, I, I got it. Uh, when we're setting the curl trails to new trails, we also want to um, have new new trails to. Uh, we're gonna maybe create a new. Is that is that the the, the, the problem? Oh, see, this was an update setup. This was an update setup. That's not where we want to do, do, do these things. We want to do this in update brain. That's why nothing happened. We didn't lock all this stuff. Let's try this now. <laughs> all right, all right. So now we see the trails of, of this enemy. Oh, we need to make sure that, that this is deleted when, when we switch to a different enemy, but that's okay. So now you can exactly see with the kind of um, line, the kind of trajectory an enemy is, is, is uh, following. Here you can see the snaky line. Arrgh! Super nice, super nice. Uh, uh, some tweaks I want to do here is um, I want to clear new trails whenever I switch to a different brain. Yeah, so when we're here, we're switching the, uh, the brain. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe we want to uh, do like reset enemies, huh? Is it reset enemies? Uh, reset N, reset N. No, actually, we don't need the reset N because it's, it's going to get caught automatically because then enemy array is going to be the empty, that's okay. But we do want to have uh, cur trails. Uh, we want to empty out this bad boy. So we're gonna have new some new trails. So now you can always see the trail that an enemy is leaving behind uh, behind itself. I don't quite like how it's like this um, this line because I don't see acceleration that well. So maybe we all only gonna lock the trail like every every couple of frames, right? So if show trails and uh, do we have a t variable? Do we have a t? We do not have a t. Let's do a t. T equals zero, uh, and then an update function t plus equal one. So here, where we're where we logging the the, uh, the location of the protagonist, um, are we going to make sure that if t uh, modulo five, for, uh, let's say every five frames, we're going to log it? Then uh, then we are adding new trails. Let's try that. Um, if show trails no this is this was wrong see this was wrong we, we tried to do this here but this is not quite quite correct see now we have like a bit of a mer it's, it's not quite as continuous the trail is not quite as continuous but the with the spacing of the of the dots we can kind of also track a little bit the acceleration of the enemy and i think that might be nicer yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. this is this is cool Cool stuff. I like it. Let me even um, maybe something that I want to absolutely do is, uh, you know what? I, I do want to maybe uh, whenever we res reset the enemies, we're gonna set t to zero because I noticed something that 
uh, I want to actually have the starting location of the enemy to be part of the trail. Let's see. Uh, yeah, because previously it was, there was no dot where the enemy spawned, but now there is one. All right, so let's see, what else do we need to do today? So we have the main enemy, the protagonist, we have the trails. Um, so now we need to get to the follow. So we want to, some enemies want to maybe, want to maybe seek out the player, want to maybe follow the player. And for that, I need to actually uh, simulate the position of the player. <laughs> we are actually, like, we have to think about all these little details, right? Um, so the player has the position and we want to kind of like make sure that this is taking it into account. I think the name of the thing, uh, of the location of the player was, um, well, it was PX and PY, but that's without the X scroll. <laughs> so this time around, I'm thinking about these things. Uh, I think PSPR. PSPR was the, um, was if, uh, the object of the player. Uh, and uh, I'm just gonna create like a little thing in Rooney here. That's gonna be 64 and Y is gonna be, uh, I don't know, 110. And then um, this is going to be the location of the player. And when we're drawing things, I'll draw brain. Yeah, that's good. Um, we are going to draw this onto the screen, a little bit, a little circle maybe. So these are the lines, and we're going to be going to go um, circ uh, PSPR X, PSPR Y. Um, what is the color? Uh, five, right? Is that a f no, five? Yeah, five. Five is good. Um, uh, radius, uh, 10. Uh, too big, too big, five. Uh, three. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Just gives you like an idea where the player is supposed to be so we can like see if when we program the, this, this new follow function, if our enemy is actually following the player. <laughs> Okay, so now the follow function. Um, this is, I'm not sure if we're gonna need this. There's a good possibility that we're actually not gonna need this, but I saw this a behavior in, um, in Aspirate and I liked it and I wanna try it. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna just delete it. It's kind of like a custom behavior um, and kind of to show you what happens if, you know, we have this, like, this system that we, when we code the, the behavior of the, of, the, of the enemies. But sometimes, maybe there's coming some crazy behavior that is not be able, that we can't really replicate using the system. In this case, we can still kind of like cheat it by just hard coding it, just making it, you know, coding it with Pico 8 and not with our weird custom coding system. Uh, and that's one of those examples. Um, so we want a player or an enemy that, that uh, follows the player. Um, mm, 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 mm. Right, so here we're gonna go else if FLW equals, uh, no, CMD equals FLW. Uh, just wanna make sure that we have, everything is captioned, clone. Uh, and this is gonna be follow. Mm. So what happens when that happens? Well, I, I think we need like a toggle I, I, I don't think it's something that we just can like do now. We just, we need a toggle for that. And that is gonna be my, although, now that I'm thinking about this, nah. Um, we're gonna say E dot F, F -L W equals true. We're just gonna set it to true. And then, you know, it's gonna be kind of like the same thing when we're animating the direction. So we have like an ARDS here, right? Like we're animation direction speed. So we also maybe want to have an animation direction uh, FLVS, flow, follow speed. And that's gonna be saved in parameter one. Um, there's also second parameter. I'm, we're not gonna use that second parameter, but we might use it for something. Par two, we don't know what word it for, we wanna use it for. for. For now, let us just like use one parameter. So that toggles the follow to true and then um, and then it sets the speed for the follow. Um, something I wanna do is whenever we change something about this, we're gonna reset the follow. And that's, that's a bit of a costly thing that we're doing here right now, right? Uh, I don't know, let's, let's make it, um, let's maybe reset only. Let's maybe reset only if we set the heading. Now let's let's also reset it here. Nope. 
when we animate the direction. Yeah, we should also reset it here. Again, uh, if we never need that, that follow, if we realize that we never actually use it in, uh, that for any kind of... Oh, <laughs> I need to plug in my light. <laughs> I have a light that has a built-in battery and sometimes I unplug it because I need to plug and then I don't notice it because it has a battery. <laughs> yeah, so again, if we never need that follow thing, we can always delete it and that will save us a bunch of tokens uh, if we need them. Uh, but for now, let us uh, change the enemy behavior. So we're gonna go if e.flw then, and we're just gonna reuse the code for animation animating the direction. It's kind of like the same code, right? We are animating it. Uh, this time it's gonna be F L W speed, right? Right. Now I'm not sure about this. This is this is something that is weird. We don't because we constantly are we are kind of in mode where we're constantly adapting the angle of the uh, direction. So well, first of all, let us calculate the angle between the enemy and our, our target position, right? And there's a code for this, and I, I'm going to copy and paste here because it's kind of like, uh, it's this, it's this. Let me let me copy and paste here. I, I prepared something here. Bam. Um, so arctan2 is a is a trigonomic trigonometric trick trigonometric function, kind of something like sine and cosine that we can use and for this case to calculate the angle between two uh, two points. So we have two points on the screen and you want to draw a line between the two points and then what is the angle of that line? Um, I'm using a different variable called PLSPR, but I think we are using PSPR. Uh, PSPR E dot Y, PSPR, x e dot x it's very important for the arctan function to first do the y and then the x not the other way around first the x first the y and then the x it's unusual because usually x is first and y is second but for arctan 2 function y is first and then x is second and then we're just dumping you know the difference between the positions uh, on the y-axis, the difference in the distance between the two points on the y-axis and on the x-axis, we're dumping that, that into arctan, and that will give us an angle between between those two points. All right, I'm going to delete this all this this other stuff. This is this let's let's call this targ. So now what we need to do is we need to um, we need to animate the, the the angle of the enemy towards the targ. This is the target. All right, so let's let's do like a stupid implementation of this and let's just just set the angle of the enemy to the target, right so we're gonna go um, e dot ang equals target. we're just straight setting it to where it's supposed to go to follow follow the player and we're gonna just see how this works uh, there's some problem there's some e problem what ah there's no then here okay uh, so let's create a new brain. Let's do a setup. We're going to use a different enemy this time around. Let's make the golden enemy. The golden enemy is going to be the one that follows the player. Okay, and let's let's make it start um, uh, off off to the to the side so we can see it actually following the player. Okay, um, and then let's export this right away. Uh, and then yeah, I mean we can wait a little bit and then we can. <laughs> I'm just I'm putting the line in there and just in case you know we need to uh, we need to put the error somewhere we can delete it later on. Uh, let's um, let's set it to follow. Right, it's not working. Uh, let's put uh, because it's not moving. Let's set the heading to zero one. Oh, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. let's try it again. Oh, I, I I didn't didn't export. I didn't export. I didn't export. You know what? Let's set the heading immediately to one, and then let's let's set it to follow. Yeah, uh, immediately we see a problem. Um, it it works. It broadly speaking, works. It, it it picks the right angle, but it um, it gets once it hits the player, it just like it just wants to keep hitting the player, <laughs> keep hitting the player. Um, let me let me do a little thing here. I, I think it would be fun. Because we're not using the mouse, right? So let me uh, make it so that uh, the the position of the player can be controlled by the mouse. All right. So let's let's do put it in an update function. 
Uh, update brain. Yeah, that's not good. That's what we want. Yeah, and we're gonna go PSPR.x equals um, stat32. Stat32 is the x position, and the y position is gonna be stat33. I wrote it down so I don't forget. Always oh, easy to forget these things. Okay, so now the position of the player is controlled by the mouse. And now we can play cat and mouse with the enemy. Woo! It's following us! It's following us! Woo! 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 Yeah! But now the problem is obviously we cannot actually escape it. We cannot escape it. And that's kind of like always the problem. And that's why, I, you know, it's a common idea in a lot of games that it's like, oh, we make the enemies follow the player. Ooh! But actually, it's not that great if you think about it. it like if, in like a, in a naive implementation of it, it's not that great. Because the naive interpretation of it kind of makes it so that the enemy will always hit the player. And then it's like, okay, it's so just a matter of time until I get hit. I have to shoot it down. There's no other way. I cannot avoid it, right? And that's bad. That's, that's, that's not cool. That's... I don't know, it's, it doesn't feel like there's, like, it seems like it would be playful, but it's just like inevitable. It's kind of like this very predictable behavior. So I think um, something that is, is a good idea is to turn it off. Like when, once the enemy gets close enough to the player, I want to turn it off. I don't want to be like, oh, okay, and then just, you know, uh, if, if you got close enough, then just continue along the same trajectory as you were continuing, uh, and it's good. All right, so we need to calculate the distance between the, the uh, enemy and our player. Uh, I have a function prepared for this. We, I think we did this in a basic schmuck tutorial. I don't think we need to... I, I, do I have to walk you through this? Uh, I'm going to do a copy and paste here. I'm just going to do a copy and paste here. I'm going to put it all the way on the bottom. Because these are like tools, right? These, these belongs into our tools. We need these in our, our main program. Copy lists might be useful for other things but also the distance function here. Um, so this just takes two points, uh, just the raw coordinates of two points, and spits out, um, using a Pythagoras thing theorem, it, it does like a equal rectangular triangle and calculates length of the hypotenuse and it's, you know, does magic and it gives you the distance between two points. Um, right, so then we can go back to the enemy and make it so that you know we, we stop following the player. Right, so it's here, right? So we're gonna go um, if dist um, PSPR PSPR e dot x e dot y. If that's smaller than I don't know ten, then e dot flw equals false. We're just gonna turn it off just immediately. Um, there's a problem here. We need to do x. And otherwise, it's good. So let's 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 see how that feels. Whoa. Ooh, see, now we can avoid it. It's, it gets a little bit close. Let's make it let's make it even even less capable. <laughs> let's make it more incompetent. Uh, by the way, this twenty five might be a good um, candidate for the second second property. So now you can see. Ah, see, we can avoid it. Now it's fun because it makes us kind of like be active and stay on our toes, but it's not lingering. It's, you can shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Uh, and so I think this is, this, is a good, this is a good implementation of a follow algorithm. It might be even fun. You could even tweak it so that it's, it's kind of like when it gets closer, it's, it's less capable of maneuvering. Um, but yeah, that's something I also wanted to do now. I wanted to not just like set it to the destination, but maybe animate it so so it's even less capable than, than that. So let's 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 instead of the targ, let's let's calculate the diff. The difference between the uh, position that we the, the angle that the enemy should have and the enemy the, the angle that it currently has. Uh, so something like this, ang. Right, and then I want um, I want to. Add the diff. Uh, let's for now. Let's divide it by two. Look, let's see what that happens. I think that uh, that might be. Oh, it's not working at all. Oh, it does work. I just uh, it, it just got turned off. Uh, see, there's a weird thing happening. Did you see that? It's a bit weird. 
Okay. Um, now let, let us do it correctly. So we had like this the animation speed, and we want to actually make it make it uh, make it make a difference. Yeah, here uh, and this FLWS. This is the speed at which the um, the angle should change uh, as a maximum. And so what I want to do here is maybe do something like this. Um, let's do mid. E dot ang. Uh, no, e dot uh, diff. E dot flivs. So that's kind of like a way of making so make it so that um, uh, mid chooses kind of like the middle value from those two extremes, and we set you know uh, the maximum speed in one direction, the maximum speed in another direction, and the actual difference. We compare these three against each other, and we pick the middle speed from those. And I think this should solve the problem. Let's 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 uh, let's see how that works. We're gonna go to the number seven. Now it's not moving at all because uh, we set the maximum speed to to zero. So let's set the speed to very very low, zero zero one. As you can see, it now it follows. It actually follows. Let me let me see. It it tries to get there, but it's it cannot turn fast enough to get me. If I put it here, then it is able to track me. But it's it's not fast enough. So let's let's make it faster. So see you. Ah, mm. we have a problem. <laughs> we have a problem. Uh, this is a direction problem. Uh, this this happens when when I circle it, it wants to go the other way around, right? It wants to go the other way around. This is kind of like the three hundred sixty degrees problem. Let me show you real quick in in paint. Okay, so you have a circle, right? And then let's say you uh, here is zero. Here is zero degrees, right? Give me give me a strong. Okay, so this is zero, but there's also three hundred sixty, right? So we're working in degrees right now, so it's maybe a bit more intuitive, right? Um, so let's say I'm here, which is kind of like, let's say it's 300 degrees. I'm not sure if what it is. And let's say my target is this, which is, I don't know, 200 degrees. I'm not sure. It's, I'm making up those numbers, but it's just something lower, right? Then it's obvious. We, we keep subtracting from 300 a little bit until we lower our angle down to 200. It's very easy, right? But if I have to go the other direction, if the target is in the other direction and it crosses over this zero line, then something weird happens. Then because now that's maybe like, I know, 100 degrees. No, it's not 100 degrees. Let's say, let's say it's, it's, it's 10 degrees now. Let's say our target is 10 degrees. It would be obvious to just keep adding until we arrive at, at 360 and then reset down to zero and then keep adding, right? Like that's, 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 an, that's the shortest way. That's the shortest way in this direction. It's, it's easy. But that's not what happens numerically. Numerically, in, to get from, from 300 down to 10, you have to go the long way around. <laughs> the fact that uh, the degrees reset at zero kind of like causes like uh, our, our enemy to do some weird behavior. So what is, what is the solution here? Well, the solution is very simple, actually. So um, first we need to recognize when this happens. When are we actually taking the long way? When, is, if, when do we know when there's a there's faster way? And if it's the, third, the circle is 360 degrees, then you know that if you have to go more than 180 degrees, then you are taking the long way. <laughs> then there is another way that is faster, right? Um, and in Pico 8 numbers, that's uh, 0 0.5 because 360 degrees is 1 and 180 degrees is 0 0.5, right? So we're going to go if diff. So if the distance that we want to travel, if that's greater than 0 0.5, then we are making a mistake. -y. And then we have to short, there's, we have to find the shorter way. Um, except we want to make sure that it's absolute. And if we try to travel more than once around the circle, then that means that we can go the other way around. And you go the other way around by adding or subtracting 360 degrees. So again, we're going to go uh, diff plus equals, or name, no, no, minus equals one. Uh, again, it has to also work for negative. So we have to go SGN uh, diff, actually. 
So sine is just taking um, the sine in front of the number. So it's like if it's plus, it just says plus one. And if it's minus something, something, then it's just minus one, right? So let's just like walk you through this thing. Let's say our, our program made a huge mistake and it wants to go 0 0.7 around the circle, which is more than 0 0.5. It's, it's, you know, it's some kind of amount of degrees. In this case, this will trigger, uh, and then diff is gonna be 0 0.7 minus, minus equals um, the sine of 0 0.7, which is one. And that will get us to minus 0 0.3. Right? Th then we're going the other way around the circle and that will get us to the angle that we are looking for. And now let's try this with a negative number. If so, if, uh, if, it's, if we're trying to go minus 0 0.7, again, that's because of the absolute. We are stripping off the minus here and checking you know, the magnitude of that number and that magnitude is zero, uh, greater than 0 0.5. So this, this will trigger. Then we're gonna subtract the sine of 0 0.7, which is gonna be minus one this of 0 0.7 is minus one, and that will get us to, zero, to 0 0.3. So we're going again, we're going the other way, other way around the circle. We're, we're changing the direction in which we're going around the circle. Okay, let's try that. Again. Let me show you, oh, oh. See, now it's, oh, there's still some problems. I think the problem is when we're going twice around the circle. Yeah. Okay, um, so let us try to fix this now. Um, let's go e.ang equals uh, e.ang modulo one. This makes it so that the angle of the player ship, of the enemy ship, is um, doesn't remember how many times it, it, it turns around. Because like right now we can, you know, you go, you know, 360, 720, it keeps adding the degrees. So it kind of like keeps remembering how many times it went around the circle when it keeps turning, right? And that then makes this problem uh, come up again that we just had. Um, but if we do a modulo there, then uh, it will reset always to zero. It will actually reset. Uh, let me make it go around my circle. You can see now it's nice and clean, no skips anymore. It really follows the player now. That is what we wanted. And actually, this might be something that is maybe worth um, adapting for this as well. We haven't dealt with it yet because we just like, you know, we. Uh, programmed it by hand, so we don't, we, you know, we don't have to deal with this. But this might be actually something that is might be worth imp implementing here when, we when we're animating the direction of the player. But you know, that's something maybe for the next time. Oh, uh, let me save this for now. Yeah, this is good. Uh, let me make this a bit, a bit, a bit faster. Uh, let me make the zero point zero one. I want I want it to be a little bit, a little bit incompetent. <laughs> it's really fun to see the trails. So let's try something like this. Zero point zero eight. I had I had some. 0 0.08, like, I think this might be a good one. Yeah, yeah, now, now it's like uh, But also something I want to do here is I want to, oh Jesus. Uh, I want to actually, oh, continue. Um, I want to set it in the center of the screen now. Um, and I want to actually make it a real fly in the way, the way we had it before. So let's set it to, I don't know, 0 0.5. Uh, then oh, let's wait until we have, to, oops. Uh, yeah, way. Uh, let's set it to view until we traveled 40, uh, 40 pixels. And then we set it to, to follow. Uh, and then we're gonna do like animate the speed down to something a little bit slower. 
um, by but but very slowly. So it flies in fast, and you get like panic. But then as it gets closer to you, uh, it gets a little bit mellow. It really snaps to the to the following. Oh yeah, because the following is still too too extreme. Let me let me export. Yeah yeah. Okay, let me animate down before uh, even maybe before we're waiting. So it's like uh, ASP. Now you can tell, like you, we can we can have a lot of fun with this with this. That's true. Whoa! Oh right, right. We have to go minus. Yeah. Okay. This looks a bit more more natural. You can see that enemy is flying fast, but then it slows down and then it tries to follow maybe 0.2 and then we start faster. Uh, if we do that, then we definitely want to animate the speed down faster. This is a bit aggressive. This is a bit aggressive. I, I don't like it. Okay, so now you can see like that enemy is kind of like really, uh, it's really struggling to keep up with us. And that, that's kind of like what you kind of want. We do, we're going to bombard the player with a lot of distractions and we don't want to have like one enemy that kills them that's like already overwhelming them. We all want to have a bunch of enemies that are all not, not really quite as competent, but together they kind of like this are this formidable challenge. All right, I'm going to export this. Uh, so let's see our to-do list. You know what? If I look at the time, I think it's a good idea uh, to keep the boss in the loop uh, to keep this for the next time and maybe already next time we can discuss our ideas for the bullet system But for now, let us move on to the doggy zone mm -hmm. the doggy zone. Right your challenge for the doggy zone is mm, again We want to maybe do like a go-to statement that has that just goes to a couple of times So we, we kind of have a controlled loop and um, and then I want you to actually use the tools to create a bunch of interesting behaviors um, you can also try to make the boss behavior. So maybe like a boss with two phases would be uh, an interesting thing to try out. That's definitely the thing we're going to do on the next episode. And if you have any cool enemy behaviors that you want me to try out, then you can also post them down in the comment section. I'm eager to try out what kind of crazy behaviors you came up with with our current system. For now, I'm going to move on to the part at the end of each episode where I say a big thank you. I want to shout out all the beautiful people on coffee.com who are supporting the show, who are making the show possible. Thank you so much for your support. I also want to shout out a cool um, um, schmuck prototype I saw on Discord. This one is by Hugh Shifter. Uh, it's an unnamed prototype, I think, at this point. And it is, this is like a really beautiful, uh, you know, it's just like the pure basics, but you have a vast, very fast scrolling background on a desert landscape. Really cool. The ship, ship is looking nice, really nice, juicy bullets. The explosions are coming coming from this, uh, this tutorial series, but you know, they, they look really nice in here. Um, so one comment that we had is that um, it, it's a bit unclear if the cacti are a background or if there is something that you have to avoid. If that's something that you have to avoid, then they seem like they're um, everything moving a little bit too fast. Maybe I would may make it a little bit slower. Even if the cacti are not enemies, I would make it a bit, a bit slower. Um, I do like the scan line filter. So I think this is like shader lens. I think there's like a tool that you can that you can you know, move over an, an existing window on your desktop that gives you like these kind of like scan lines really nice stuff i love it thank you so much you shifter yeah so it seems like we're gonna have one more one last episode of um of brains but also maybe already gonna start discuss uh bullet patterns that's gonna be fun see you next episode